Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, earlier this morning, we issued the following statement attributable to the spokesperson for the Secretary General on the elections in Zimbabwe. The Secretary General is concerned about reports of incidents of violence in Harare following the elections on the 30th of July. He recalls commitments the stakeholders made in the Peace Pledge and the Code of Conduct to ensure a peaceful and orderly electoral process. He calls on the political leaders and the population to exercise restraint and reject any form of violence while awaiting the announcement of the election results. He further calls on political leaders and electoral contestants to pursue any disputes through peaceful means, dialogue, and in accordance with the law. The elections mark an important step forward in Zimbabwe's democratic development. The Secretary General notes the peaceful and democratic spirit, which was commended by national and international observers during polling day. He appreciates the commitment of the people of Zimbabwe to deepen democracy and the renewed focus on development of the nation. Uh, in another statement, we said that the Secretary General condemns the 31st of July suicide attack targeting the provincial government's development of refugees and returnees in Jalalabad city, Afghanistan, killing at least 15 civilians, including a staff member of the International Organization for Migration. Any attack deliberately targeting civilians is unjustifiable and in clear violation of international law. And in another statement, the Secretary General commended the Central and West African regions for their successful joint summit of the Economic Community of West African States and the Co Economic Community of Central African States on peace, security, stability, and the fight against terrorism and violent extremism, which took place in Lome, Togo on the 30th of July, 2018. The full statement is online. The Security Council will hear from Martin Griffiths, the Special Envoy for Yemen, in an open briefing followed by closed consultations this afternoon. John Ging, the Director of Operations of the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, will also brief the Council members on Yemen. Following that session, Mr. Griffiths will speak to reporters at the Security Council stakeout. UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, said it is shocked to learn of the tragic death of six Nigerian asylum seekers among them three children who were killed in a blast in the far north of Cameroon. UNHCR has learned that on the 29th of July, 12 asylum seekers were being forcibly returned to Banki, Nigeria, in a Cameroonian army truck, which drove over an improvised, improvised explosive device that exploded. Six Cameroonian soldiers and six other asylum seekers were also injured in the incident, which took place in Homaka, Meosava Division. UNHCR once again calls upon the government of Cameroon to refrain from carrying out further forced returns of Nigerian refugees and asylum seekers. It also reminds Cameroon of its obligations under international law relating to the protection of refugees and asylum seekers, and the commitments it made by signing the tripartite agreement for the voluntary repatriation of Nigerian refugees from Cameroon in March 2017. The World Health Organization today said that there have been new cases of the Ebola virus in the North Kivu province in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. WHO said the new cluster of cases is occurring in an environment which is very different from previous locations as it is an active conflict zone and added that the major barrier will be safely accessing the affected population. The agency added that it is working closely with the government to quickly address the outbreak. More information is available on WHO's website. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that volcanic activity on Vanuatu's Ambe Island, which has a population of over 10,000 people, has intensified in the last few weeks. The Vanuatu Council of Ministers has called for the immediate compulsory evacuation of Ambe residents to the neighboring island of Maiwo. The United Nations and humanitarian partners are supporting the response through the government. OSHA is closely monitoring the situation and supporting the resident coordina coordinator's office with coordination. We will continue to report on new developments. Our colleagues at the Food and Agricultural Organization today said that the global food, that, that global food commodity prices fell sharply in July, causing the food price index to drop by 3.7%, the biggest monthly drop since late last year. In particular, export prices for dairy and sugar experienced sharp declines. The dairy index declined by 6.6%, with butter and cheese prices dropping faster than those for whole and skim milk powders. And the sugar index fell by 6% to a nearly three-year low, largely driven by improved production prospects in India and Thailand, both important sugar-producing countries. More details can be found on the FAO website. And last, today, 
Cabo Verde has played its regular budget dues in full. Thank you very much. The honor roll now totals 114 member states. And that's it for me. Are there any questions? Yes, Ben. Hi. Um, is there, this, we're into the third day of uh, violent protests in Iran. Uh, has the Secretary General been following and has, has he got any uh, response to uh, claims by the opposition that the uh, authorities are using violence against the protesters? Uh, on this, we uh, uh, once more emphasize, as we do with, uh, with all uh, such protests, that uh, the rights uh, of peaceful to uh, their freedom of expression and to peaceful assembly needs to be respected by all, including the security forces. <laughs> with the Iranians about this this present uh, protest, these present protests? Uh, there's, there's nothing to disclose at this stage, but like I said, uh, we have a point of principle on this, and uh, we hope that our, uh, our messages will be conveyed to all who need to hear it. Yes. Thank you, Farhan. Is anyone trying to mediate Cameroon, Anglophone, Francophone conflict? The shooting seems to be getting worse. Uh, you're aware of the efforts uh, by the uh, envoy, Francois Lansanifal, and uh, he has been working with uh, different parties. As you know, the Secretary General uh, and other officials in the system also have uh, had discussions on this topic uh, when, the, when they've been dealing with the question of, of Cameroon. But uh, Mr. Fall is the person in charge of the, this basic issue. Yes, Rosalind. Hi. Are you and agencies aware of reports of a Saudi coalition airstrike on or outside the Al Thara Hospital in Hodeida, Yemen, and if so, what is their response? Uh, I'm I'm not aware of any uh, particular of that particular airstrike. Obviously, we have uh, encouraged all sides to to avoid fighting in Hodeida and ensure that uh, Hodeida city and the port can remain functional. Uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Griffiths will brief the Security Council this afternoon. He'll, he'll talk to you afterwards, and he can. Uh, deal with your questions uh, on Hudeida and other topics at that point. Yes, please. Thank you, Farhan. Um, look, uh, I, uh, maybe you saw the reports of um, quotes in the Investigative Management Center um, about Russian journalists in um, CAR uh, that uh, they, um, they they were in touch with uh, one of uh, UN mission representatives, and they even called his name Martin, and that this Martin recommended uh, them a driver and uh, was in charge of their safety. Uh, do you know something about the possibility of connection between Russian journalists and uh, United Nations mission in uh, Central African Republic? Thank uh. you. What I can say on this is uh, that uh, the UN mission in the Central African Republic, MINUSCA, is working uh, with authorities uh, trying to help with the investigation into these deaths. Uh, you saw what uh, I, I had to say on, on the finding of the bodies yesterday. And uh, as you're aware, uh, the UN mission, MINUSCA, did send a team to the area, Sibut, uh, to help with that. Uh, and that's where we stand for now. Yes. Uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, with the liberation of uh, Dura area and uh, the Konaitra uh, governor, is, uh, uh, what's the situation in the uh, Ondof area? Do you have any update on the patrols or any uh, the activity of Ondof? Uh, actually, we are trying to get in touch with our uh, colleagues in the UN Disengagement Observer Force and get an update on what their presence in the area is. I, I don't have that update just yet go, going in, but, uh, but we are in touch. Uh, th there is some activity there. Uh, how about those who have fled the area? Do you have an update about the, the militants and the civilians who went, some of them through Israel, others uh, to Jordan? Uh, yes, you, uh, we, we provided an update uh, with uh, some of the figures just yesterday. So, so uh, look at uh, the information we put out then. Uh, yes, Mr. Badi. Thank you, Farhan. The situation in Gaza continues, humanitarian situation continues to deteriorate. Can John King give us a briefing? Uh, on the situation in, in Gaza? Humanitarian yeah. situation uh, in Gaza. I, I don't know whether he's willing to speak at the stakeout once he does the Yemen briefing, but in, in, in any case, uh, we did have a statement from all of the senior UN humanitarian officials in the area just yesterday about uh, the situation for Gaza. So I would refer you to uh, the joint press release that was put out uh, at that point. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. 
Um, I asked you yesterday uh, what the UN official um, statement is about um, changing border or changing territories in Kosovo, between Serbia and Kosovo. And they, you told me that UN is encouraging every kind of um, discussion that is going to help um, finding or settle the status of Kosovo. Mm -hmm. uh, is UN included in, the, in this process? Uh, at, at this stage, uh, as you know, this is a, a European Union-led process, and we encourage, uh, like I said, uh, dialogue between Pristina and Belgrade on that topic. Uh, about the idea of correcting maybe a border, what the Albanian um, Kosovo um, president said yesterday? Well, th this is for the parties them themselves to discuss. Yes. Uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, I think uh, today was uh, the first day in six years when you and peacekeepers could uh, reach the Syrian-Jordan border. And uh, the question is, uh, uh, will the UN peacekeepers uh, in further uh, uh, having uh, their uh, job there and uh, in this area? and uh, uh, how it will uh, uh, help with the humanitarian situation there? If yeah, we, we are trying to uh, get an update from the Disengagement Observer Force about their deployment at this point. Uh, obviously, what we want to be able to do is make sure that uh, the peacekeepers can go about their mandated tasks. Uh, because of fighting in the area, it's, that's been difficult in recent weeks, and if there's an ability for them to return to their previous duties, that that would uh, certainly be something we would try to achieve. But we're trying to get some uh, updates about what their deployment will be. Yes. And if I may, a follow-up yes. question about Syria. Uh, today, the Security Council couldn't, uh, again, uh, uh, get and agree about the situation with the chemical weapons. So uh, how do you... Um, uh, uh, think it will uh, affect the situation with the humanitarian uh, providing to the people and uh, can it affect uh, uh, um, uh, uh, providing uh, from France and Russia uh, uh, they're making their humanitarian uh, goods for Syrian people? Well, that, that's a separate issue. Obviously, we commend uh, the initiative uh, by France and Russia uh, to uh, uh, improve uh, the uh, uh, delivery of humanitarian aid uh, to that part of Syria. Uh, the chemical weapons I issue is a, is a different topic, and as you know, the members of the Security Council are seized with that issue. We have stressed the need to make sure that there's proper accountability so that chemical weapons cannot be used in Syria or elsewhere. Yes. Yeah, um, has there been any uh, communication between the UN and the Gaza authorities involving the environmental terrorism that is being launched via kites that is burning up a lot of Israeli farms and wildlife. Yes. Uh, uh, I understand the yes. Israelis uh, uh, sent a letter to Amina Mohammed. Has that been, res uh, been uh, responded to and what was the response? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware uh, of whether that letter has been formally received, but yes, we have been in communication with uh, the local authorities. You'll have seen uh, that Nikolai Mladenov, the UN Special Coordinator uh, for the Middle East peace process, uh, did uh, visit Gaza, and uh, he's made uh, the point to avoid uh, the sending of any such provocations as incendiary kites. Uh, I'd refer you to the statements he has issued. Yes. Uh, is there any update on the improvement of the uh, finances of the United Nations after the recent uh, shortfall in the budget? Uh, we've, we've provided some periodic uh, updates, uh, uh, but, but yes, we uh, continue to need uh, different funds. You, you saw the uh, letter that was issued by the Secretary General on this a uh, couple of weeks back, and, and those continue to be concerns. Uh, again, uh, as, as we pointed out, some of these are concerns that are dealt with over the course of different countries' budgetary cycles. You know, different payments come in at different times of the year, but, uh, but we have fallen shorter earlier than we tend to do, and, and we do need uh, uh, support to, to get the money coming in now. And with that, have a good afternoon. <laughs>